Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Necro Cleric Guide. Today, I'm going to learn you how to play some Necromancer Cleric. Uh, so for those of you that are wondering, this is the build that I've been playing on stream recently. It's not that good. I just hit level 20, and so I'm going to quickly go over how to play it if you want to try playing it yourself. Um, I'm going to give you two build guides here. I'm going to give you the, way, the one that I did and the one that I would actually recommend playing. So first, to start with the one that I did, I'm going to go with stats real quick. All that matters is get wisdom, put all your points into wisdom. That's it. So start with uh, as high wisdom as you can, put all your points into wisdom. Uh, the rest of your stats don't matter, because uh, you don't have anything else that's based off feats. So I have some strength, you know, for carrying stuff, I have some con for health, I have some intelligence, so I have skill points, but nah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, charisma is nice as a secondary stat, so playing as like a human or a drow or something is good, because you get, you get that uh, higher stats. Uh, so next, uh, after that, is skills. Your important skills are diplomacy, for dealing with all of those, like, uh, you know, the NPCs, uh, heal, because heal gives you positive energy and negative energy spell power, uh, and spellcraft. Those are the only important skills that you need, so if you get three skills, then you're good to go, or three skill points per level. Uh, the feats that you should take, uh, empower, maximize, and quicken are essential. They should be the first three that you take, because um, you have a lot of spell-like abilities. Um, the one that the build that I did has two chill touches, a negative energy burst, and a inflict mass moderate wounds. Um, so that is fantastic when you can maximize and empower all of them for a lot of extra damage. Uh, outside of that, you want to make sure you're taking spell focus and greater spell focus necromancy, and then also spell penetration. Uh, ideally, more spell penetration. This character, because I'm the Warforged, I had to take out a main time body, so I'm losing out on a feat. If you're playing as a human, though, you don't have to do that, and you get extra feats. If you have extra feats after you take uh, both spell penetration and greater spell penetration, <sighs> I'm not sure what you should take. There's probably an extra feat in there. Potentially mental toughness, so you get more mana, but um, you have pretty much all the feats that you need. And then lastly, spells. Are there any important spells that you need? Meh, not really. Just make sure you have the good spells like uh, Freedom of Movement and Death Ward and stuff like that. Um, there's no particular spell that you actually need to make sure you're taking all the time because most of the spells that you use are spell-like abilities. Um, Next, onto the actual tree here. I'm going to kind of detail how I leveled it up, or how I put points into it as I leveled up, so you can kind of see that yourself and get a, and get a good uh, grasp of that. So first, we're going to take Emissary of the Dark, and then you're going to be taking uh, Chill Touch right away as your spell-like ability. This is the first thing you want to take, because Chill Touch, spell-like ability, is fantastic. Um, it allows you to damage monsters, and you can maximize and power and quicken your spell-like ability. Um, boom, taking negative energy spell critical. Uh, you want to take all the cores going up, uh, more negative energy critical hit chance, uh, more negative energy spell power, then boom, you get your first spell, Enervation. Enervation's not that really that good. It's useful if you have like a big boss that doesn't have spell resistance because you go like Enervation and then Destruction and the guy just dies. Um, for like, it's like an 80 mana instant kill combo. Um, but it's kind of. So it's, it's not too bad. Um, and there's extra mana here. Make sure you take the 90 extra mana. It's very worth it. Now, this spell-like ability is Necrotic Bolt. Don't take Necrotic Bolt because it, you can't apply any metamagic feats to it, and it only does a d6 per level, and it receives 50% spell power. Uh, it's horrific and awful and garbage. Don't ever take it. It's the worst spell you could possibly have. It does less damage than, like, Chill Touch does on the regular. Um, now, the most important thing is you're going to be picking up Negative Energy Burst as quickly as possible. This is going to be your best AoE spell. Now, once you have negative energy burst, if this is, you know, you're playing the regular Necro Cleric, um, you know, you're going to stop here, you're going to put other points into stuff. However, because I was playing the Warforged version, Warforged version, you're essentially just going to keep putting points in the tree. However, at some point, you have to make a deviation uh, to pick up the repair systems here. However, there's a second option, which is what I did. Uh, you can take Archmage, so essentially you, or sorry, Wizard, so you take four levels of Cleric, and you pick up, you know, Chill Touch and the ne negative energy burst. Then you do three levels of Wizard, and you pick up Pale Master just enough to get the Shroud of the Zombie. That way you can consistently heal yourself with Negative Energy Burst, and then keep putting your points in Divine Disciple. Uh, afterwards, you want to put points like uh, Wisdom here, um, picking up the in increased Necromancy DCs, uh, more Spell Critical Hit Chance, stuff like that, more Negative Energy Spell Power, which gives you access to the top row, then taking Mass Crit, uh, Inflict Light Wound, or Inflict, inflict Mod, sorry more necromancy, and improved maximum cash to level, give yourself more strength. Additionally, you want to make sure you take Necrotic Ray. Necrotic Ray is really good. Very high single target damage spell because it does 5 to 8 damage per level, um, and it bestows negative level. 
And that's essentially all the points you're going to be wanting. Oh, and then also, if you have extra points, spell penetration. Spell penetration is absolutely fantastic, so I recommend putting the points here in spell penetration. Um, and then afterwards, you've got a bunch of points left over. You're going to be spending most of your points in Pale Master, you know, picking up stuff like Deathless Vigor for extra life, picking up things like, you know, Bone Armor for more physical resistance rating in Shroud of a Zombie, Crit, 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 uh, I don't know. Uh, an egg of energy conduit so you get healed more crit i also took quicken out of here the reason i didn't take i took quicken out of here and not out of here or improved quicken uh is because uh pale master gives you negative energy spell power 1.5 for every point you spend in the tree so by having 28 points i'm getting a bunch more negative energy spell power almost 45 about 40 43 42 anyway and then also but just putting the rest of my points i just spent some of them here in archmage um, because I use a staff, so getting extra universal spell power with the staff is good, and then having a second spell-like ability for neck for chill touch is kind of nice. Um, that's essentially how I did the build, and then the way it plays is you just kind of run around with your spell-like abilities, constantly casting them. Just negative energy burst, you know, chill touch, chill touch, inflict mass moderate wounds, repeat. So boom, 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 boom. Wait on cooldowns. Boom, 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 boom. Wait on cooldowns. Boom, 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 boom. Wait on cooldowns. Make sure you're maximizing. You're right-clicking these things and maximizing in power and quicken on them always. Um, and that's that's how you do it. Now the nice thing about this character is it allows you to heal every single player in the game. Uh, you can heal yourself with, or sorry, other players with the heal spell, and you can heal yourself and other necromancers that are like anyone that has a shroud on with all your area of our area of effect spells so your negative energy burst which hits really hard because it's spell like ability you can heal people for like 600 damage at my level um and then inflict mass moderate same thing as long as you're in the radius of the circle you'll get healed for it um however despite all this the best spell to use is still blade barrier so i still recommend using blade barrier all the time because it does ridiculous hilarious damage uh so that's the build that i used now the one i recommend using instead i'm going to quickly just reset this you're using all the same points in Divine Disciple, except I'd recommend going full 20 Cleric and not playing as a Warforge. Don't play as a Warforge, and then you don't have to put points in Pale Master, because you don't have to worry about handicapping yourself with healing. Uh, and what I would do here is I would essentially still go for like negative energy burst. However, uh, put points in the healing domain, this area over here, uh, what, yeah, something. And essentially you're just putting in point enough points so you can get positive energy burst and the improved turning. So that way, uh, as long as you have a decent charisma, you can actually just rip apart undead this this character struggles a lot with undead uh if you have positive energy burst and the mighty turning here you don't really have to worry about it um so you can actually just destroy undead and then all this extra pale master archmage stuff is not important i couldn't do this because i was a warforge and if i was to do this i need to sink seven extra points in here for the repair systems and then i wouldn't be able to get my stuff at a divine disciple and then my dcs were lower so everything was resisting my attacks and it was just a nightmare um, but with this, uh, you know, you can get the extra wisdom out of here, so your wisdom's even higher. Um, and if you're playing as a human, you can pick up even more wisdom and then potentially go all the way up to the top of the human tree for greater heroism and a ton of extra uh, increased healing. So you can go ahead and positive energy burst on yourself for like, you know, 700 or something and be like, okay, whatever, I have 30 turns. Uh, and that's essentially how you play the build of the character. So for th thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you'd like to have more information about this, unfortunately I'm not putting together a written guide, but please just leave a comment and I will rep reply to you and answer your question. Uh, the guide, th this build sucked and it wasn't very good or fun to play, um, so I wouldn't recommend doing it, but I've had two people ask me for a build guide, so here you go. It's a build guide. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Um, so please follow the subscribe and the, the Twitter and the... Uh, Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.